Yo, it's been a minute. Probably been wondering what's going on with my typewriter project. I mean, with all the things going on in the world right now, it's probably been top of your mind. I mean, it's been what, like six months? I should probably be done by now, right? Yeah, so I definitely did progress the project. So let's see how far I got. Quick recap. The goal of this project is to make ASCII art with a typewriter. Apparently some people do this professionally by hand, but I'm trying to automate it. Last video we finished on a very positive note. I cracked down on the mechanism to pull the keys using a trusty old solenoid. Yeah, it was a big boy, but I never intended to use all of the keys of the typewriter. For ASCII art, I just need to use a set of keys that can properly represent the shades of gray. If you want to learn more about ASCII art, I did a video in the past. The link will be down in the description. The trusty old solenoid did end up disappointing me though. More on that later. The next milestone coulda, shoulda, woulda been the carriage return mechanism. And you know what? Actually delivered on that one. I'm quite pleased with the mechanism to be honest. The constraints were similar to the keys. I wanted a motor that was strong enough to pull the whole carriage return, but not too strong that it would break the string. Also, it should be quite loose when it's turned off, so that when I type again, the carriage can easily return back to its original position. For the carriage return, additionally, I needed to know when it reached the end, so I know when to stop pulling. I settled for a beefy brushless DC motor. This guy checks all the boxes. It's got a strong exterior, soft interior, just like the perfect boyfriend, that's me. The question remains, how do I know when to actually stop? I did think of a bunch of complex mechanisms, but I settled for something quite simple, stall detection. See this hat that I put on top of the motor that's winding up the string? It's actually hiding a little secret. It's got a little magnet inside, and under the motor, there's a magnetic encoder. And what does this magnetic encoder do, you may ask? This guy can tell the orientation of the magnet by sensing the changes in the magnetic field. And with that, I can tell when the magnet stopped rotating which means the motor stopped rotating, which means I need to stop pulling. I think this worked really well. Let's see it in action a few more times. That was actually pretty sweet, right? Until it broke the spring on the carriage return. So what do I do now? I either get a new typewriter or I get this one fixed. How the hell am I gonna get this guy fixed though? Obviously when you're balls deep in a typewriter game, you need to get a typewriter guy. And these guys are quite difficult to come by nowadays. I mean, for all I know, they're almost extinct. Luckily, I found Alan. Problem is, Alan lives quite far away. I don't have a car in the UK. Every time I rented a car, Alan seemed to be on vacation. And so this project was put on ice for quite a while. Several months later. Finally, the stars aligned. I rented a car for the weekend. Alan was available and I brought him the typewriter. The legend. Fixed it overnight, greased it all up. And now it's working better than ever. We are back in business, baby. So we're not done with the keys. There are a few special keys that I needed to actuate for what I had in mind. One is obviously the space bar so I can do white pixels. The other one was the shift key so I can do uppercase letters and escape the limitation of only using about 10 keys and actually double it. And finally, I also wanted to actuate the backspace so I can overlap the characters to make some unique shades of gray. Man, this project was quite ambitious. For these, I decided to go with servos. They're easy to use and strong enough to pull all them keys. Also, since this was all gonna be string based and I didn't wanna cut the strings perfect length every time, I needed a way to tension the strings. For that, I developed this ratchet mechanism. It looks a bit weird, but the idea is you can have a loose string, pull it around a key, start rotating on this knob, which will tension up the key, and because of the ratchet mechanism, it will not unwind. I'm not sure if I'm explaining this right, but I think you get what I'm trying to do here visually. The assembly isn't great, but I'm still learning. The whole mechanism works and I'm quite happy about that. And now we should be ready, right? I mean, I got the carriage return working, I got all of the special characters, and we got the keys from the last video using the solenoid. So it turns out the solenoids barely worked. The only reason they did work is because the string was going down and directly to the solenoid in a straight line. But once you have more keys, you need to add more twists and turns to the pass of the strings. Yeah, and this is where physics kind of fucked up my whole shit. Turns out that with all of these turns, there was too much friction in the system. And now the solenoids were not powerful enough to pull the string at all, like it didn't move. I thought it was because it wasn't getting enough current, so I tried all a bunch of things, none of them worked, and I was about to go on vacation, and I was almost ready to give up on this project. I went to see my boy Philip in the Xec Republic. He hates it when I call it Xec. If you don't know who Philip is, he is the legend that helped me design my first PCB for my plotter project. If you haven't seen that already, please go check it out. Speaking of PCBs, you know who else got you back if you need one for your projects? It is PCB Way. 
So I've used PCBWay in the past, yes, for my plotter project, and I was surprised how easy it actually is. Once you've designed your PCB, all you need to do is upload the files directly to the website. You even get a 3D preview to see if everything is as expected. I mean, how cool is that? And then you can get it manufactured. And the price is actually super generous, at least in my opinion. And if you're not a PCB guy, that's not all they're offering. They got great 3D printing services, and even though I already got a 3D printer, it doesn't print metal. I mean, look at all these materials. I really can't wait to make use of that. But don't wait on me. Get your 3D printed parts using the link down below, really helps out the channel. And thanks PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Back to the video. During my vacation, I had an idea to replace the solenoids. How about a motor that I'm actually familiar with, a good old stepper motor. From what I remember, these guys have decent torque and they can be quite fast. So I really wanted to give it a go. And surprisingly, they work quite well. I mean, they can even pull the string along these twisty routes. If I gave them enough current. So off with the solenoids. I had kind of committed to solenoids already and now I have a bunch of them and I don't know what to do with them. If you have some ideas, leave a comment down in the description. On with the stepper motors. To control a stepper motor, you need one of these guys, a stepper motor driver. And to control four of these stepper motors, you need four stepper motor drivers. I had already tested it with one stepper motor, so now it's a question of wiring four of them together. And I was finally ready for a full test. Yo, this is how the wiring ended up. Yikes. Shit could explode when I turn it on, but uh, let's see. I think I didn't fuck it up. Seems like I haven't. Although then again, nothing is working. So maybe I did. Okay. For whatever reason, I don't even know how. I connected all of the stepper motor drivers upside down and the moment I gave them power, I fried all of them at the same time, plus the microcontroller. After feeling sorry for myself for five minutes, I remembered that the past me knew exactly that I was not good at this stuff. And I actually had a bunch of spares. Okay, round two. I mean, it was probably round 11 or 12 or 50, I don't know. But it kind of works. Sometimes. If the string doesn't stretch, or the driver doesn't overheat because it needs so much current, or the motor doesn't move because it's not getting enough current, or when something else breaks. So I did get all of the mechanisms to work. Even the shift keys. Check this out. But to be honest guys, I don't have an end in sight for this project. The keys kind of work, but that's like the most important part. Like that's 99% of the project and that mechanism should be extremely reliable and I'm not really feeling it. The supplementary mechanisms for the special keys, they also work, but they're a little bit too slow for my taste. And already had broken the carriage mechanism once. And I'm pretty sure if I use the carriage mechanism extensively, it will probably break again. And that really didn't fill me up with confidence. That being said, I'm very sorry, but I decided to pass on finishing this project. I know a lot of you found me and subscribed because of this project. And I'm sure you wanted to see the results just as badly as I wanted it. And I'm probably disappointing a lot of you with this decision. The journey has been way too long. There's so much other stuff that I want to learn so I can teach you guys about it. And I kind of feel like I'm missing out if I keep insisting on this project. So I really hope you stay along for the journey so you can see me fail again in the future. I will win eventually. I'm, I'm sure of that. So big thank you for watching and sticking around after all of this time. And I hope to still see you in the next next one. Peace.